So, you know, Damon and Elena, there's always that back and forth, back and forth. You know, what can you tell us about the progress of the relationship um, so far? People typically um, think that Damon and Elena have this, uh, this phenomenal arc of this love relationship. And they kissed, which, is, which was really cool for Damon, intense. They think they have this like phenomenal love relationship, but it's just so crazy that they don't really uh, up until this point. I mean, he killed her brother. I mean, I, there's, there's no better way to say I love you than to snap your brother's neck in half. You know what I mean? Um, so I never ultimately saw them being together, so to speak. But this whole back and forth, back and forth, back and forth thing, you realize because people in our lives we do go back and forth we are human beings we are drawn to something and then we pull back from it because we've realized for whatever reason it's not good for us or it's not healthy or it's not safe or but we're drawn to it and that show this show was always about this thing where especially with Damon and Stefan as a vampire where you can love someone and not want to hurt them but there's something about it that makes there's something about being this being that makes you want to, when did you love someone, you want to rip their neck out. I mean, that is a very strange reality. It's a weird reality. With Damon and, and Elena, they, there's something unspoken there that they can't explain. What an awful situation to be in. My brother, who I love, have had every opportunity in the world to kill, but I haven't. I haven't, and he hasn't killed me. I'm in love with the same woman twice over. Same woman looks alike, just different people. You know, it's one of those fool me once situations, you know. But it adds for great, I mean, it makes for great storytelling. And I think that the two of them, i.e., you know, Damon and Elena, have a lot of... Uh, a lot of bonding to do, a lot of understanding of each other. Damon makes her laugh. Damon will die for her, protecting her. But Stefan is very pure in his love. And, you know, it's not about good boy, bad boy. As much evil as Stefan has, I mean, as much evil as Damon had in him, Stefan equal, has equal parts evil. And versus, you know, vice versa, good. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't think there's a choice, meaning she chooses one or the other. But I do think that it's an interesting aspect where it's an uncomfortable situation. And when, you know, if Elena ever does admit her feelings verbally, either physically or, or whatever, how would Damon react? What would be his first, you know, thought? As to what? Ah. I think what they should do is, is Damon should just kidnap her and take her to the Caribbean, buy some island, just hang out for a while. You know what I mean? See if she really means it. Um, and then maybe Stefan and Klaus and everyone end up finding the island and they go to Paris for a little while and then they bounce over to Barcelona and then they, you know, go to Thailand. Just, can you imagine, like, you know, a couple seasons of, yeah, why not? And, and quickly, Sage is coming in present day um, Mystic Falls. Can you talk a little bit about that quickly? First of all, Cassidy Friedman is amazing. And, and uh, put it this way, it, the reflection that Damon has would be as if to say, you know, a 75, 80 year old man reflecting back on his high school sweetheart. The one that engaged him in love and understanding and sort of changed his way of viewing the world or a mentor a sexy mentor that you're sleeping with. Um, that's Sage. And I think it's important for us to see how Damon became Damon, much like we saw how Stefan became Stefan by way of Lexi. You know what I mean? Sage is Damon's Lexi.